Well, in our summer holiday carousel, God willing, my dad will be back on next Friday evening. But for tonight, here's a thought on grace after meals or benching, as it's known, which comes up in this week's portion of Akev. The Torah tells us, Va'achalta, and you shall eat. Va'savata, and you shall be satisfied. Uveirachta, and you shall bless. It's interesting that for Jews, the main grace is after food. First we eat, then we're satisfied, and only afterwards do we bench. While for other religions, grace is said before eating. And Lord Satz, when he was chief rabbi, discovered this was quite a significant difference on one particular occasion when he was asked to say grace at a lunch with Prime Minister John Major, Israeli president at the time, Chaim Herzog, and other guests. Uh, when the invitation was made a few weeks in advance, the office of the Prime Minister had asked whether the chief rabbi would want a kosher lunch, to which his secretary responded, probably. Uh, then the Prime Minister's office got in touch again and asked whether the chief rabbi would say grace in Hebrew, to which he agreed. So it's the day itself, and the Prime Minister announces Ladies and gentlemen, pray silence, the chief rabbi will say grace. And at that moment, the chief rabbi froze because as you know, when we make a blessing, the food or drink must be there in front of us. For instance, the challah or the kiddush wine, we have to have it on the table when we make the blessing. But there was no food on the table at the time. And the chief rabbi was stuck in this terribly awkward situation of needing to make a bracha to start the meal, just as the prime minister had requested but there was no food to make the blessing on. Just then, he noticed an ornament on the mantelpiece, which had been beautifully decorated with a, a bunch of grapes. So he plucked one of those, held it up and said, Baruch atah Everyone said amen, and they started the meal. Later, the chief rabbi joked with the prime minister saying, you know, you have more faith than the Jewish people. You thank God for what you are about to receive, whereas we, after the experience of our history, prefer to have received it first. Pure Lord Sack's wit. But humorous stories aside, in Judaism, once we see the food on the table, we make a blessing both before and after eating. However, the Torah only instructs us to make a blessing after the food. The reason that we also make a blessing before food is not from the Torah. It's because the sages taught us to do that as an extension of the biblical instruction to make a blessing after food. So there's a very important question here. If the Torah is going to prioritize, telling us either to make a blessing before food or afterwards, which should it choose? I'm sure you all have your own ideas, but I think if the Torah is gonna tell us just about making a blessing before or after, it should tell us about making a blessing before food because it's easier to instinctively thank God for giving us food once we've had it. Just like, for instance, when we leave a party, we say to the host, thanks for dinner. We are less likely to thank people before we have eaten the food. And I think that's why the Torah should have told us, make a blessing before food. Why instead does it tell us to make a blessing afterwards when that seems more obvious? And we would probably do that anyway, even without the Torah telling us. I'm going to refer to an entirely different topic in the portion of Akev and use that to answer this question. One of the main episodes that Moses talks about in this parasha is how he smashed the first set of tablets because the Jewish people served the golden calf. Moses didn't discard the broken fragments of the first set of tablets. Instead, when the Jewish people were forgiven and they received the second set of tablets, both the new whole set and the old broken set were placed together in the ark. The ark was then positioned in the Holy of Holies, which was, of course, the holiest space in the temple in Jerusalem. But why? Why place the broken tablets in the Holy of Holies when they were a constant reminder of the great moral failure of the Jewish people? In fact, on Yom Kippur, Every precaution was taken in the temple service to avoid any reference whatsoever to the golden calf. <laughs> Yet ironically, throughout the entire year, the evidence of the golden calf, the broken tablets, were stored right there in the Holy of Holies. How does this make any sense? Well, to my mind, this was Moses' greatest act of leadership. 
Rather than destroying or hiding the broken tablets, he placed them right next to the whole ones to say, as human beings, we have a tendency to support and acknowledge each other when things are broken and difficult. That's when everyone clubs together to push through and pray to God for help. But when things are whole, calm and easy, we can quickly forget each other and forget God. And Moses wanted the Jewish people to think of each other and God when they were whole, just as much as they did when they were broken. So he put the broken tablets right next to the whole tablets in the same ark in the Holy of Holies. Now think about a meal. When we're hungry and a bit broken, just like the broken tablets, that's actually when we are more likely to think about who gave us the food and thank God by making a blessing. But when we are full, satisfied and whole, like the new tablets, that's when there's a huge risk of us not thinking about God or anyone else for that matter. And so quite the opposite of what I originally thought, the Torah instructs us to make a blessing after food to remind us when we are happy and feeling full, like the whole tablets, to behave with the same gratitude and thoughtfulness as we would do when we are hungry, like the broken tablets. And with that, Grace After Meals, Birchat Hamazon, is not just a song, nor is it just a blessing. It's fundamentally a Jewish insight into what it means to show gratitude and to always think of other people who share the art of life with us because even though we may be whole, they might be broken and need our help. Shabbat shalom.